A concept that's important to fully wrap your mind around for the CTS is something called the AV project cycle. It's a project process that was developed through our standards, the 2M and 10 standard, to make sure that people that are involved in any type of AV project management uh, application could use this format to have a successful and efficient outcome. The 2M standard is uh, the process for the program phase and design phase as well as the construction phase and then the 10 standard handles the verification and support side of the complete project cycle. If you want to find out more information about these two particular standards as well as their full PDF, that's on our website at avixa.org, probably backslash standards, but it's definitely on our website somewhere. Let's dive into a little bit more depth of what the AV project cycle is for this video. This graphic shows us a couple things. First of all, as the AV project cycle kind of works as a clockwise flow, the first and very first thing is the customer in the center. Now I like to change out this term instead of customer, I like to use the word client because in our AV world, we typically have long-term business relationships with our AV clients. Starting from the top, we have program phase, we have design phase, we have construction phase down at the bottom, and then we move into verify and support. Now, technically, verify support shouldn't be called a phase because it's a whole separate standard, but I like to kind of keep it in my brain to go from program design construction to verify and support. So I kind of like to just consider it a whole huge uh, consistent four phase AV project cycle. To each their own, that's just how I uh, envision it myself. The other thing that I want to point out here is that the phases can be active simultaneously. So program and design, as much as I would love for program to be fully completed before we move into design, sometimes that's not real life. Construction phase sometimes happens while design is also happening because maybe the building's already being built. The other thing that you'll probably see as we continue along with our discussion is that the AV project cycle is very close to the standards used in construction project management as well. So let's go ahead and look at that together. We're looking here at a graphic that uh, is helpful for those of you that like timelines. At the top part, we have this orange top line. The middle part is the purple, and the bottom line is a maroon color. The orange is that ISO 21500 standard, and you can see with the purple line being our 2M standard and our maroon bottom line being our 10 standard, is that our two standards typically fall in a very similar outline of that ISO standard. So it's just kind of a visual here to see that we're kind of following the same process. We just call it a few different things and there's a lot more involved because it's AV specific. All right, now let's look at the definitions of each phase. So the first one I want to talk about is program phase. It's realistically the salesy type phase of the AV project cycle. So it occurs at the beginning of the project and you want to hopefully have as many people that are going to, be, going to be considered stakeholders or people that are going to be decision makers in the process in those conversations of the program phase. You're talking to the customer about what they're wanting or needing in their, their project. So it might be something where they have an existing building and they're wanting to upgrade their conference room. Um, it might be an auditorium that has no AV in it and they want to incorporate AV into it. It might be a situation where it's a brand new construction and they know that they're going to have a large AV infrastructure and so right out of the gate they want to make sure that the people in the AV um, side of things are involved right in the beginning. As much as that can happen, um, the best that can be as we all probably figured out by now. The program report is the outcome of this phase. So program report is typically like a packet, something like my notes here, that's maybe only about 10 or 11 pages long. And what this does is outline the summary of all of those meetings. And that fuels our conversations for our design phase. So rightly so then, we would move right into our design phase. One thing I wanted to point out though before we do that, in the program phase, you're not actually talking about specific technology. You're just trying to pull from the customer what they're wanting to accomplish with this design. So yes, there might be some conversation about upcoming technologies and benchmarking and things where they're like, we want to see if this is something we want to do in our job. While also doing something like a site survey, um, we're 
they you go into either an existing building and take a few snapshots and pictures and do a checklist of things that are present there's another video for that check that out uh, you might also do something like a benchmarking where you'll take them to a site of an existing technology so that they can see that it works the way they think it's going to work um, so lots of information gathering in that phase and there's real no timeline for that phase it could be a couple days it could be a couple months it all depends on where the client is and what they're wanting to do so with that let's move into design phase the design phase is the next phase in our AV project cycle hopefully with a successful program phase you have that program packet that kind of becomes the guide for what's going to eventually become your design packet that design packet then becomes the guide for the construction phase right so in the design phase packet or that final group of documentation you have a lot of things you have things like building drawings you have AV specs you have the contract the um, different types of permitting. You want to make sure you're as detailed as possible with this documentation because if things get missed it adds time down the line in your construction phase. I like to use the phrase in program and design is that you leave no questions for the next guy. So if I have a design packet with schematics that are as detailed as I possibly can make them then I have less questions I gotta answer in the, con in the next phase when it gets handed off to the next person. Regardless if you're in any phase, every document definitely needs a sign off from somebody. And we'll talk about more about who those might be as time goes on. Um, so again, at the end of the design phase, you have the design packet, which is going to be handed off to the construction phase, guys. So let's talk about construction phase. And we're literally right in the middle here because at some point, whether it's an existing building or a new construction, the AV equipment is now have a, has arrived and needs to be installed. So that construction phase guide is again those design packets and there's a whole set of um, uh, things to be completed inside of that construction phase as well as people involved in that process and that's outlined in the standard a bit more. Uh, we're going to talk about it a little bit with this video but it's definitely outlined way more in that standard. Um, so one person or one team that might be specific to our interest right now is the AV in install team. So whether that's the integrator who did a design bid build or design build, it's the people that are actually putting the things in the rack. Hopefully they have as much documentation to reference for answering any types of questions like, okay, I have six chassis, where do they go in the rack, what room, what do I label them, etc., etc. Hopefully those, that type of information is all inside of that design packet. A lot of check marking is done in this construction phase. For instance, if it says, I'm going to place five screens on this wall on the right side, make sure that each of those five screens were mounted and mounted properly, um, and then we move on to our next phases. So if something has to be adjusted, like for instance, back to that example of, well, only four screens could fit on that wall, not five, that involves conversation with everybody in the project, definitely including stakeholders, because if you have to remove something that large, like an entire screen, that's actually like a scope change, where you're saying, okay, the content that they expected to have on that screen is no longer going to be present because the monitor is not there. So that involves conversation, which could add delay into your um, whole project, but essentially, that's what's taking place in the construction phase, is actual um, screws turned, things being built, and eventually we move to now the verification and support phase. Again, some people don't like me calling it phase, so for those of you that would prefer to just consider it a verification and support standard, by all means do that. For my brain, I call it a phase because now during this construction phase, and sometimes it starts, the verification and the commissioning and the support actually starts inside the construction phase because portions of the AV install gets created and, fin and finalized. So it doesn't all just stop and start at the end of each phase. Um, and so once that process starts, or those commissioning agents come in and they start programming things and getting things working, verification and support handles everything that makes sure it is what it says it is, it operates the way it's supposed to, it provides the outcome that is intended based off of the design package and the contractual documents, and then we make sure that those checklists are all checked off. So at this point, 
if anything's gonna get missed, this is where it gets caught. And hopefully the people that are involved in, excuse me, doing the verifying of and commissioning of the system are thorough in the, in the fact that they are checking everything. They're not just checking maybe what they know, but they're checking everything that they're expected to um, to make sure it's going to be a proper sign off. So um, the support side of this then is customer training, maintenance uh, requirements or contractual programs that you might have um, that you might have had in the contract. Um, there's all kinds of ways that you can support your client during the uh, verifying and commissioning phase and then once everything is checked off, what does that look like after? How are you going to make sure the customer is at, is at a complete um, a complete success rate with their product. Okay, one thing that I definitely want to talk about which is important to understand inside of all of these project phases are the people that are involved in the project phase. So I sorted out in the fact that there's owners or people who have stake in the project itself, right? So those are those end users, facility managers, AV tech managers, etc. Then we have our design team, and then we have our install team. And you'll see, based off of that graphic, some of the people that are involved in those two teams and kind of where their perspective, or respective roles go. And one big element of this graphic is the arrows. Everybody is communicating to everybody during this project. If there's some designation of person, like a project manager for the... Uh, the AV control system or the project management for the plumber um, or whichever, those people are designated in some sort of document in that design package so that if I was to have, if I was a commissioning agent and I had an issue with shipping, I knew exactly who to go to, right? So hopefully that's detailed in that uh, documentation. There's always communication between people in these two teams. The other teams that might be involved in the AV project cycle are people like management of the building, uh, communication services, and sub-subcontractors. So people who are working for the other subcontractors. Those subcontractors might be coming in to do a job that's just a day or a few hours. They do the job and they leave. They get the sign off and they leave and that's done. So it's people that might maybe might be doing a very, very specific part of the job and then they're done for the whole project. But either way, they're still a huge part of the success of the whole project. All right, I know I can get a little long-winded on some topics, but I hope that this helped you figure out a little bit more about the AV project cycle in its completion. If you wanna learn more about the AV project cycle, you can definitely uh, communicate with one of, our, uh, one of the four instructors, myself and one of the other three. And then if you have the CTS study book, this whole explanation starts on page uh, 290, I believe. So check out chapter 15 through the rest of the book and you'll see how there's very intricate parts of all of these phases. And this is obviously just the overview for you as uh, a study tool. So hope that helped and I'll catch you later.